In today's video, I'm going to show you a behind the scenes look at how I create all my videos. Now, I often get questions in that comment section about how to make tutorial videos just like the ones on my channel. Well, in today's video, I'm answering that question. So let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, I've been making videos on this channel for a couple of years now, and a question that keeps coming back is how do you make your videos? What program do you use? What's the software you use for your screen recording? Well, the main piece of software I've been using for over 90% of my videos has been Camtasia. Now, I started using Camtasia all the way back in 2014, and I'm still using it today for the vast majority of my videos. And the main reason that I keep gravitating back to Camtasia over other video editors has been the integration with that screen recorder. So let's just jump into my process. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is get your camera set up, get some good lights now lights are incredibly important if you want to get a high quality image and this goes for any camera you use you can be using a phone camera get some extra light onto your subject or onto yourself and the quality will increase significantly secondly you'll want to get a microphone now it doesn't have to be an expensive microphone the built-in microphone does not sound as good as just a simple external microphone you can get a lavalier mic once you're set up with a mic, lights and a camera, you're good to go. Now the next step is software. Now in this video, I'll be using Camtasia 2021, which was released the same day this video was released. And so you can get your hands on it by following that link in the description. Let's start by opening up Camtasia. Now here I have Camtasia 2021. And as soon as I double click on that icon, we are greeted by the welcome screen. Now this welcome screen gives you a number of options. You can start a new project new from template, a recording, or open a project. Now, if you are brand new to Camtasia, then I would say have a play with these, maybe go to the learning tab and you'll find lots of little video tutorials on how you can use Camtasia effectively to create tutorial videos. So you can see here, there is a little four minute video clip on how to record your screen, video editing basics, the canvas talks about audio, exporting your video, annotations, etc. Now today we're focusing on my process of creating a video. And so instead of going to the learning tab, I'm going to go straight into a new project. Now I tend to create my projects before recording this screen because this really gives me a chance to bring in those elements. We now have our blank project. And the first thing I'm going to do is save it and title this project. So when I go to file, I'm going to save it as and we're going to title this project. So I'm going to call this how I make my videos and then click on save. Now everything is set up, good to go. We're going to double check our project settings. So let's right click on our main preview window and we're going to go to project settings. Now here we can double check, make sure we're using the correct dimensions. I'm going to be using 1080p. We're going to change that and we can change the background color. I'm going to use a lighter color. There we go. You can change the frame rate. I'm going to leave it at 30 FPS and then click on apply. This is now ready to record my screen. Now let's say my tutorial is a screencast about how to navigate to the Camtasia website. Well, the first thing I do is click on that record button in the top left corner. This will now open up the recorder. Now here you can see we have our preview of the recorder. You can see that I can also select the area of the screen I would like to record. But seeing as it's a tutorial video, I want full screen. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow here and then I'm going to select full screen. So we're going to go with the full screen. Now in this capture menu, I can do a number of different things. First thing you can do is here you can select your microphone. If you would like to use a different microphone, click on the drop down arrow and select the microphone you would like to use. You can also record the system audio or choose not to record this. And you can use your built-in webcam. Now, because I'm using an external video camera, I'm not recording my webcam, but I could choose to turn this on nonetheless. So if I choose the user facing camera, we now have the webcam that is also going to be recorded. I'm not recording the camera, so I'm going to simply turn this off. I am recording my screen, however, and the screen I'm recording can be selected from this drop down area. We can record widescreen, we can record at 720p, or we can even choose to record Instagram and Facebook specific video. When I click on this, 
you will see that the size of the recorded area adjusts. You can see that I can move this around the screen and make it larger. And this allows me to really focus on a specific area of the screen. However, the majority of my videos are recorded with the widescreen, full screen view. Now, if I have multiple tabs and windows open, you can see it here in this preview, what that will look like. Okay, we're ready to start recording. Let's click on record. You can see that the recorder is recording this file. You can monitor the audio levels right here, and you can even click on restart to restart your recording. This will delete everything you have and then start over. Say you had a false start or you weren't quite ready to start recording your screencast or your tutorial, well, you can click on restart and just do it over. I can also click on pause, which will pause the recording. You can navigate to the websites you need for your tutorial, and then you continue that recording. You also have a stop button, which will then stop that recording and pull it into Camtasia, ready for you to edit. So let's navigate around this website. I'm just going to scroll up and down, look at the different products they have available. So as you can see here, they have a number of different products. I love all these products. I use Snagit every single day, use Camtasia for my videos, and you can even buy them as a bundle. Now again, there is an affiliate link in that description below, and that affiliate link will also give you a 10% discount on top of everything already there. Now let's go and have a look at that bundle. So we're gonna have a look at that bundle here. Click on that, scroll down, and you can see there are educational reviews, there is a non-profit and government pricing. You can find all the information on their website. I'm happy with this file. I'm now going to use this file for my video. So let's click on stop. We've stopped the recording and we're back to the capture menu. I can close this capture menu. As you can see, it is a separate program on the taskbar at the bottom. So I'm going to just close this capture menu and I'm going to jump into Camtasia. Now again, this is Camtasia 2021. That screen recording has automatically been brought into my editor. You can see it here at the bottom, the timeline, and it is in my media bin. Now the media bin is where you keep all the files that you will be using for this project. So at the moment I have a single screen recording, but I'm also going to bring in some other elements as well. So let's bring in an element. We're going to go to the media bin and I'm going to click on this plus icon to add more media. Now the first media I'm going to import is going to be these logos. So let's go ahead and import these two logos. And there we go, we have two images these are the flipped classroom tutorial logos. Now I can start editing. Now the great thing about this timeline is that you can not only zoom out to get an overview of all the content there, but you can also zoom in and really hone in on this audio waveform. This lets you cut exactly where you would like to cut. So let's preview our screen recording. You can see that the Okay, so there's a bit of silence there before my explanation starts. And the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to just cut this part away. Now I tend to use the shortcut S for split, but if you want to do it manually, you can always go to this little icon here and split the file. Now I can delete this. Now there are two ways of deleting it. You can click on backspace or delete, file disappears, but it leaves a big gap. So what I tend to do is I do control backspace and this will shift everything back to the start of my timeline. Huge time saver for editing. The recorder is recording this file. You can again, another space of silence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again, split, select the other waveform, split. And now as I delete this, I'm going to again, control backspace. The rest of that timeline is shifted. You can now see, you can monitor the it jumps from one side to the other. This is how those jump cuts are created. This is how you can cut out your ums and your ahs in your video. It also helps you to quickly see those mistakes that you frequently make in your videos and then just practice on not making those mistakes in the future. Once you've made a number of different cuts, what I tend to do is I tend to zoom out, select this entire track, and then I right click on it. Now, why do I do this? Well, because I want to stitch these different sections back together so they can be treated as a single section. So here you can see there is a option to stitch the selected media. I'm going to stitch them together. 
and this is now a single file. That cut is still visible, so I can still see where I cut out this little section of silence, and I can always right click on this and unstitch the file. However, I like to stitch it, it cleans up my timeline and it really speeds up the workflow. So let's go to the start of our explainer video. We want to have an introduction. Well, Camtasia has a lot of built-in assets that you can use for intros, outros, lower thirds, and they can be found right here on the left-hand side in the library. Now, if I open up the library, you'll see I have icons, intros, lower thirds. Let's select a built-in intro. Now again, you can build your own or you can use these. Just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to use the intros that are already here, present within Camtasia. So let's go with this one, simple bright tile, drag this in, and as you can see, we get a preview Her there is recording of this what file. this can... title will look like. If you would like to preview it from the library, simply double click on any of these, and you will get a preview of what that introduction looks like. I actually like this one better, so let's remove the previous one, and let's bring this one in. I'm going to drag it across my work. You, you can, can see, see that the recorder is... That file is right there. Now, it has an extra bar here at the bottom, and that's because it's a group. So let's see what is part of this group. When I click on this plus icon. You can see I'm now inside the group. This group is highlighted again here at the top. You can see I'm inside the group. I can also jump back to the main or stay in that group. In this group, I have a number of shapes. There is a group inside the group because you can have nested groups. And we have a number of callouts as well as text. So let's hover over those and let's just tweak this. We have our Camtasia call out here. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to call it demo. Then we have TechSmith. I'm going to put my name there. And then a website. I'm going to replace this with my website. There we go. All good and well. Let's change some colors here when I have this highlighted. At the top in my properties window, you see three different tabs. The one highlighted now in the middle is all about the text. So you can see this is the font selected for this text. This is the text color. If I was to change this color, instantly you see it changed over there. I can change the size of the text and the style. Now I'm going to leave it as it is and scrolling down you'll see it also auto resizes the text or auto rotates the text. Where does that rotation fit in? Well, here you can see there's an extra dot in the middle. I can use this to rotate my text and this will really simplify creating beautiful looking introductions for your videos. The first tab in the properties menu, that's the visual properties. So here when I click on this first one, I can scale this element. I can change the opacity, make it a bit more transparent. I use this all the time for logos and little elements that fly in or I can change the position and rotation. So here, one thing you will have seen in some of my recent videos is that the text is slightly rotated or there is a screen recording that has a rotation. Well, this is how this was done. So here I can rotate it, say, 20 degrees, and now this text is at a 20 degree angle. You can also use these dials to rotate it manually. Now I'm going to leave it as it is, and we're going to have a look at the third tab and the third tab, this is all about the annotation itself, the shape, the background. So here you can see we can have different themes or we can choose the different shapes. Speech bubble, change it to a thought bubble. I don't want that. I'm going to leave it as it is, but I am going to change the fill color. So the fill color is red. I would like to use my own brand logos or my own flipped classroom tutorial logos. And you can see them right here at the bottom. It says my colors. This is where you see those two colors that I use for most of my annotations. So we have the yellow and the dark navy blue. If you want to add your own colors, make sure you select them first or input that hex value and then click on the plus icon to add them to your colors. If you no longer want them, then you can always right click on that color and delete the color. This will save you time in the long run. So if you have brand colors, if you are making frequent videos, you can add them there. You will have them for future videos and they will always be accessible. Okay, let's leave this as it is and let's close our group. I'm going to jump back into the main video and here you can now see that we have that intro to restart your recording and that this we have the rest of our video. Now, I'm not going to edit this 
recording. I'm going to add it to other files that I've already recorded at a different time. So let's go ahead and remove this from our timeline. Let's go back to the media bin and let's add more media, import media. Now these are the two that I'm going to use. So I have a recording from the camera, which is coming from my camera, similar to what you are seeing right now. And then this is the screen recording. This was recorded using Camtasia. So I'm going to open these two files. I'm going to bring these in. First of all, we have this file, and then we have the example screen recording. Now, as you can see, these each have their audio attached to it. Now we have the audio, which is coming from the built-in microphone on my camera. And then here we have the audio from the screen recorder with the external mic. This is the audio I want to keep. I do not want to use the audio of the built-in microphone. Now, in order for us to be able to edit, I'm going to have to first line these up and then remove the audio from the camera. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to first visually line these up. You can see the waveforms there. I'm going to go to the start of this audio, zoom all the way in and make sure that our audio is lined up. We can now press play to preview this and make sure that everything matches up. So let's go ahead and do that. Here is a second of... As you can hear, matches up there's no echo no feedback so we're now going to select our screen recording minimizing that screen recording we can now start editing the video and the screen recording at the same time so let's right click on the video which is the one i do not want to keep or retain the audio from right click and then select silence audio this will silence all the audio in that file and as you can see now here is a second video. Everything looks and sounds great. Now I'm not adding any effects yet, but I am going to cut this part off. So S and then remove those two sections. We now have our video file. I'm going to scroll this and move this in. We now have that video in the background. On top of that, the screen recording. And now there's a couple of things I tend to do before I start cutting these files up removing dead space, removing ums, ahs, mistakes, and then stitching everything back together. The first thing I do is I clean up my screen recording. So here I'm going to select my screen recording. And on the left hand side, I'm going to go to the cursor effects. So here you can see cursor effects. And this is one of the things I absolutely love about Camtasia is those cursor effects. Perfect for explainer videos, perfect for tutorials. Here in my properties window, I'm going to select the cursor and I'm going to scale it to 200%. I tend to use 200, you can use anything you choose. Let's change it to 600 just for the sake of demonstrating. You can see that cursor is much larger. I'm going to keep it at 200 though, 200. Now we can add another effect. You can add the highlight. So I'm going to drag this highlight effect on top of my screen recording. And now this effect has been added. Here on the right hand side, you can see there's a highlight effect. I can switch this off or turn it back on. I'm going to select my brand color. There we go. And set it to about 30%. Now my cursor is highlighted. You can see that right here in the preview window. Another effect I tend to add to my screen recordings is the cursor smoothing. So if you are like me and you like to move your cursor around the screen, cursor smoothing will make sure that your cursor moves in a straight line from point to point. It's incredibly useful, especially for those explainer videos. So cursor smoothing has been added as well. You can see it here, you can change the duration, the delay. I tend to just leave it to the default. It works really well. Sometimes you need a bit more and then you can tweak these different properties. Okay, let's have a look at what this looks like. Recording the screen and I'm also recording the... Okay, all good. Let's add a drop shadow. Now I want a drop shadow behind this screen recording. So on the left hand side, you see a number of effects or you click on more. I'm going to click on more, go to visual effects and add a drop shadow. So here you can see we have a number of different effects. Drop shadow, again, drag and drop this on top of my screen recording. This now has a drop shadow, as you can see here from this corner of my shirt. And that drop shadow will stay with this screen recording no matter what we do. We want to fade it in and out so we can go to transitions. 
Let's go ahead and add a transition. Now you can see here there are literally dozens of transitions available, but I have a number of favorite transitions. For example, the fade. I love using the fade transition. Let's say that your favorite is the dial wipe. Well, you can always right click on that and add it to your favorites. And then you can easily find it here on the left hand side, makes it much quicker to find them. So let's add this fade. As you can see here, it here fades is a second into the screen. I'm going to leave that on and we're going to start editing our video. Green and I'm also recorded. Um, and that's an arm I'll cut out later. There we go. Let's cut this section out. So we're going to click here, select both tracks. Remember, screen recording and video feed. S for split. Go behind what I said. Select both. S for split. Select both. And then control backspace. This has now been smashed together. Let's preview this. Being recorded. And then this way I can then. OK. That's a bit jerky. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and make sure that we're really cleaning this up. So we want the jump cut to start here. And then we want it to pick back up over there. Let's take this section. Perfect. Thing is Let's being go ahead recorded. and try this. And then this way I can... Thing is being recorded. And then this way I can demonstrate. This works really well. Now I know some people creating videos like to pan and zoom in. So what you can do here is before this jump cut or after this jump cut happens, you can go to that section of the video file and then simply go up and scale it. So you can scale it up. There we go. And now what you'll see is you have that punch in effect. And then this way I can demonstrate. Now I'm not going to use that at the moment. So let's just undo this right now. Now, as you're editing your video, you'll probably want to zoom in and out on your screencast. So here I have the screencast at the top. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom into a section, bring it back to full screen and then zoom back out. So where do we do that? Well, on the left hand side, one of the options here is the animations. I'm going to select an animation and I'm going to choose animations. I like to use the custom animations, but as you can see, there's a number of different ones here. You can go to full opacity, no opacity, restore the previous one. And I tend to jump between custom and restore. Let's just quickly do a scale to fit. So I'm going to drag this on top of my screencast. There we go. You get a nice little preview. This is what it will look like. So it will go to full screen. I'm talking about a section of the website and then I can go to custom or I can use any of these others. You can see we have scale down, scale up, tilt. I'm going to use custom. This is my starting point and I would like my ending point to be zoomed in. So let's increase that scale, move it over here. And there we go. So what will happen is we start off like this, go to full screen. And then we zoom in on this section. OK, I want to go back to full screen now. So I'm going to choose Restore. Restore will bring this back to the previous settings. And then we can always go back by scaling it down to that corner. There we go. So this by itself is incredibly easy to set up. And for your explainer videos will save you a lot of time. Let's preview this by playing the file. Create some of the features within Camtasia and within the timeline editor that will enable. There you go. So using the animations that are part of Camtasia, you can quickly zoom in, scale things, zoom into different parts of the screen recording, and then just continue your editing process. Now, if you wanted to say, add any other type of animation. So let's say that instead of just zooming out, we're also going to rotate, simply select the end. Let's say that we want to do a full spin. Well, what will happen now is as I play this file, Enter. that will enable you. Our recording rotates across the screen. Now let's look at the audio. So we have some audio here. We'll allow you to insert. We have our audio there. Let's say we've got background noise or anything that we do not want to have as part of our audio. Under more, we have a number of audio effects that we can use. Using these audio effects, I can simply again drag and drop them on top of my video. But as you can see from this example, we have compression, fade in, fade out, and some noise removal as well. 
Now, every single one of these settings has additional properties that you can tweak to really get it to the setting that you want to use. Let's say you've edited your video, you're ready to export the file, you want to share it onto YouTube, or well, you go to the top of Camtasia and then you see that export button. Now, when you click on export, you have a number of different ways you can export your file. You can either export a local file, export to screencast.com, Nomia, TextMid Video Review, Vimeo, YouTube, Google Drive, or any of these. Now, you have to connect your accounts before you can export to these different services. But what I tend to do is I tend to save it as a file, and then I use that file to upload it to YouTube. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to Local File. And then here we have a number of different presets. You can see these presets are all shared and created by Camtasia. I tend to do a custom production setting. Let's go ahead and click on Next. Here I can choose the different file types. Again, I use MP4. And one of the things that Camtasia does is they allow you to produce it with a controller. That means that that video will then be a standalone video with a controller and you can embed it onto websites or different places. Now, because I'm using my videos to upload to YouTube, I don't need that controller. So I'm going to untick this box. We're going to go to Next. This is where you can double check the video information. So here you can click on Options. Here you can add some video information. This is great to get tags and metadata into your video. Now we're going to click on Next and we're going to give it a title. So how I make my videos in Camtasia. And there we go. Select the destination folder. I'm going to select the correct destination folder, select that folder and click on save. Now you have an additional box that you can tick, organize it in subfolders. I tend to leave this ticked because it really helps with the organization of your files. Let's go to finish. And the file is now being exported. Now depending on the size of your video, your project and the speed of your computer, this rendering may be faster or slower than what you see on screen right now. Once you have your video all finished, you get an overview of the project rendering. So here you can see the content size, video dimensions, the frame rate, all the information you need. And then by clicking on open production folder, you now see that file right there. It's an MP4 file. And there we go. We have that video file. You can see those animations are included. You can see the drop shadow on the back of that video. You can see how it zooms in and out on different sections. And you can see that the cursor on the screen recording is slightly larger than standard. Now in my next video on Camtasia, I'm going to show you how you can use the built-in templates, how you can use annotations and many more of the functions built into Camtasia to create amazing looking videos and explainer videos that you can share with your students, staff, colleagues, or anyone you'd like to share them with. I hope you found this helpful. Now remember to scroll down to the description to find that discount. Now at no extra cost for you, you'll find that affiliate link in the description below. It'll give you a 10% discount. Simply click on it, it brings you to the cart and that code will be applied right there. I hope you found this helpful. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.